Okay, this lecture video is about solving polynomial inequalities. Um, and so we want to solve the inequalities, and you want to make sure that you give your answer both in interval notation and graph the solution on a real number line. Um, there's also one other thing that, that you need to make sure that you do on these, and that's that you show this test that um, I'm going to show you when we're going through our examples. So here's the first example. It's x squared minus 9x plus 18. And in the next chapter, we're going to be looking at how to graph these. But just quickly, I want to show you what a quadratic graph looks like if you've never seen one before. And it looks like a big capital U. And so um, this basically is saying, right, so if we had this as an equation, it would be y equals x squared minus 9x plus 18. And so this x squared minus 9x plus 18 part are all the y values. And so what this is saying is I want all the y values of this equation that are greater than or equal to 0. And so on our graph, that's what y values are, are above the x-axis. So that would be these ends are above the x-axis. Here's where the graph is crossing the x-axis. And so we want the interval on the x-axis where the graph is above the x-axis. And so it depends on what um, parabola you have, because this parabola could also be um, the other way around. It could be like this. And so then um, if we wanted the y values where this thing was greater than 0, it would be this middle interval here. And so it would be these x values um, between where the graph was crossing the x-axis. So these are a couple of the situations that can happen with these. Um, <clears throat> and so what we're going to do is we're going to find out these places where the graph is crossing the x-axis. And that's going to break our x-axis up into three intervals. And then you're going to test the three intervals to see which ones give you a true statement. So that's the process that we're going to do. And the test is really important for you to show um, on there. So, so the first thing I need to do is figure out where this thing is crossing the x-axis. So I'm going to switch back to black. And <clears throat> the way that we do that is we set this equal to 0 and solve for x. So this one will factor. It factors as x minus 3 times x minus 6. And if you set x minus 3 equal to 0, you get x equals 3. And if you set x minus 6 equal to 0, you get x equals 6. So we're going to put 3 and 6 on our number line. And this breaks our number line up into three intervals. The three intervals are, and sometimes it helps if you put the negative infinity symbol and the infinity symbol on the graph. But negative infinity up to 3. Infinity always gets a round bracket. Um, because this has an equal sign, we're going to use a square bracket to end our interval. So a 3 and a square bracket. And then from 3 to 6, using square brackets at both ends. And then from 6 to infinity. And again, infinity always gets a round bracket. So these are the three intervals we're going to test. <clears throat> you need to make sure that you pick a number that's um, smaller than 3. You can't use 3 because the number 3 we got from setting this equation equal to 0. So you have to pick something that's um, directly inside of this interval. So I'm going to test 0. 0 is in that interval, um, and it's the small or the easiest thing inside that interval that we can use to test. I always plug it into the factored form because I think it's easier than plugging it back up into the original. Um, but you could plug it back up into the original if you prefer. So 0 minus 3 is negative 3. And 6, 0 minus 6 is negative 6. And so we get 18. Is 18 greater than or equal to 0? And it is. It's true. And so I put a big capital T above that interval on my number line. And then from 3 to 6, we have to pick something that's directly inside of this interval. So you could test either 4 or 5. So I'm going to test 4. When I plug 4 into this factored form, 4 minus 3 is 1. And 4 minus 6 is negative 2. And so I get negative 2. And is that greater than or equal to 18? And the answer to that is that it's not. It's false. Oh, sorry, not greater than or equal to 18. Greater than or equal to 0. And it's not greater than or equal to 0, so that's false. 
And in our next interval, 6 to infinity, we want to test something directly inside of this interval. So I'm going to test 7. And when I plug 7 here, I get 7 minus 3 is 4. And 7 minus 6 is 1. And so I'm getting 4. And that is greater than or equal to 0, so the interval tested true. So the true intervals are your solution, so we're going to graph that on our real number line. So we put in our square bracket. The square bracket is because we have the equal sign. If there's no equal sign and this was strictly greater than, you'd use a round bracket. And you shade all the way down to the arrow and also shade in the arrow. And do the same thing with the 6 out to positive infinity. Shade the line and shade the arrow at the end. So that's the graph on the real number line. And then the interval notation is negative infinity up to 3 with a square bracket. A big capital U, it means the union or joining of these two sets together. And then 6 to infinity. And again, infinity always gets a round bracket. Okay. Our next example here, 5x squared minus 4x is greater than or equal to 9. We always want to compare this to 0, so we want to know, is it above the x-axis or below the x-axis? So we need to make sure that we get this 9 on the other side first. So we'll have 5x squared minus 4x minus 9 equals 0. This one also factors. The only way for us to factor 5x squared is 5x times x. And then I need to factor 9 so that when I do FOIL, I end up with um, the negative 4x in the middle. So we want to take 5 times a factor of 9, and then um, x times a factor of 9. And I want to end up with a negative 4x. And notice if you add 5 and negative 9, you get the negative 4. And so that's how I want this to work out. So I want to end up with a 5 and a 9. So that means that I want to put a 9 here. That'll give me 9x. And then I want to put my <coughs> 1 here. That's what I'm doing for you. That'll give me 5x. And I want it to be negative 4x, so I want a negative 9x, which means that when I do this multiplication, I need it to be negative. So I should have a minus sign in between here. And when I do this multiplication, I want it to be positive, so this gets a plus sign. So now I get the term that I want in the middle. I also get the 5x squared that I need for my first term, and negative 9 times positive 9 gives me the 9 that I, negative 9 that I need for the, my constant. So that's equal to 0. So then set these two factors equal to 0. Add 9 to both sides, we get 5x equals 9, and then divide by 5. And so we get x is equal to 9 fifths. And set x plus 1 equal to 0 you get x equals negative 1. So on my number line, I'm going to put the two numbers negative 1 and 9 fifths. This gives me three intervals. Again, if um, it helps you to put these infinity symbols up on the graph, then go ahead and do that. So we have our first interval from negative infinity to negative 1. And again, this has the equal sign, so I'm going to use a square bracket. And then negative 1 up to 9 fifths. And then the last one is from 9 fifths to positive infinity. So these are the three intervals that we need to test. In the first interval, you need something that's less than negative 1, so I'm going to test negative 2. And I'm going to plug it into this factored form here. 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. And then negative 2 plus 1 is negative 1. So here I get negative 19 times negative 1 is positive 19. So is this greater than or equal to 0? And the answer is it is. So we put a big capital T there. Um, between negative 1 and 9 fifths, I'm going to test 0. And when I plug 0 in there, 0 times 5 is 0, so I get negative 9. And then 0 plus 1 is 1. So I get negative 9. Is this greater than or equal to 0? And the answer is no, it's not. So we put a big capital F above that interval. And then our last interval, 9 fifths up to infinity. And so 9 fifths is the same as 1.8. And so I can test 2. You just have to make sure that you pick something bigger than the 9 fifths.
And so when I put 2 in there, I get 10 minus 9, which is 1. And then um, 2 plus 1 is 3. And so we get 3. And this is greater than or equal to 0. And so that's true. So it's the outer intervals again. So shade from the 9 fifths out to the positive infinity and that arrow. And then shade to the left of negative 1 and that arrow as well. And then the interval notation would be negative infinity to negative 1, union 9 fifths to infinity. On our next example here, x squared plus 3x equals 0. So again, we want to solve this for x. x squared plus 3x equals 0. We can factor out an x, x times x plus 3. <coughs> and so don't forget to set x equal to 0. And x plus 3 equals 0. So we get x equals 0 and x equals negative 3. So put those two numbers on your number line. Negative 3 and 0. Make sure that when you're putting these on your number line, you go from the smallest to the biggest, working from left to right. Okay, so again, if you want those infinity symbols up there, put those up there. So we have negative infinity to negative 3. This one does not have an equal sign, so now we're going to use a round bracket. And then negative 3 to 0. And the last interval from 0 to infinity. So we want to pick a number directly inside of this interval. So I'm going to test negative 4. And we get negative 4 times negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. And so I get positive 4. Is positive 4 greater than 0? And it is. It's true. And then between negative 3 and 0, I'm going to test negative 2. You could test negative 1 also if you wanted to. So negative 2 times negative 2 plus 3 is positive 1. So I get negative 2, and that is not greater than 0, so that's false. And then the last interval from 0 to infinity, I'll test positive 1. And so we get 1 times 1 plus 3 is 4. So I get 4, which is greater than 0, so that interval tested true. So this time, make sure you use round brackets, shade out to the arrow and shade the arrow. And then from the negative 3 out to negative infinity and shade the arrow there. And so our interval notation is negative infinity to negative 3, round bracket union 0 to positive infinity. So you need to make sure that you include all of this as your work when you're doing these on an exam. Our next example here, so we have three linear factors. And so we have three values of x that are equal to 0. So don't forget to set this x equal to 0. And then x plus 6 equals 0 gives us x equals negative 6. And then x minus 2 equals 0 gives us x equals 2. So we have three numbers to put on our number line this time. We have negative 6, 0, and 2. So now this time we have four intervals that we'll need to test. The first interval is from negative infinity to negative 6. There's no equal sign, so we're using a round bracket. And then negative 6 to 0, and then 0 to 2. And our last one is from 2 to infinity. In the first interval, I'll test negative 7. So we'll have negative 7 times negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1. And negative 7 minus 2 is negative 9. And really is all we're concerned about is, is this greater than or, um, or less than 0? Um, <clears throat> and so you can go ahead and multiply that out. because, But because I know I'm multiplying three negative numbers together, I know that it's going to be negative, which is going to be less than 0. But if you're more comfortable, you can go ahead and multiply that out. And you get um, negative 63. And so that's true. And from negative 6 to 0, I'm going to test negative 5. And so we get negative 5 
times negative 5 plus 6 is 1, and negative 5 minus 2 is negative 7. Uh, multiply that out, that gives you positive 35, and that is not less than 0, so that's false. And then from 0 to 2, I'm going to test 1. When I plug 1 back up into there, I get 1 times 7 times negative 1, <coughs> which is negative 7, and that is less than 0, so that interval tests true. And then from 2 to infinity, I'm going to test 3. So I'll get 3 times 3 plus 6 is 9, and then 3 minus 2 is 1. And here I get 27, and 27 is not less than 0, so that interval tested false. So the true intervals are our solution. There's no equal sign, so we're going to use round brackets. Shade from the negative 6 out to the um, negative infinity arrow, and then the interval from 0 to 2. And then in interval notation, it'll be negative infinity to negative 6, union 0 to 2. And our next example here, we have x squared minus 36, that quantity, times the, qu the quantity x minus 4 squared. So um, this time we have um, three, four, well actually four linear factors. We can factor x squared minus 36. It factors as x plus 6 times x minus 6. And then we have x minus 4 times x minus 4, because we're squaring the x minus 4. So we have um, x equals negative 6, positive 6, and positive 4. So we're going to put those three numbers on our number line, negative 6, 4, and 6. Make sure that you put them from the smallest to the biggest, going from left to right. And so we have four intervals again to test, negative infinity to negative 6. There is an equal sign this time, so we need a square bracket negative 6 up to 4, 4 to positive 6, <clears throat> and the last interval from 6 to positive infinity. And on our first interval, I'm going to test negative 7. And negative 7 plus 6 is negative 1, and negative 7 minus 6 is negative 13. And negative 7 minus 4 is negative 11. And <clears throat> negative 7 times negative, or minus negative 4 is negative 11 again. And so again, whoops, I forgot my 1. Um, it's not really important for you to know what number that is, but again, if it makes you feel more comfortable, you can go ahead and calculate that out. And so it gives you, and it's going to be positive 1,573. Really, you just want to know, is it positive or negative? Because is it less than 0 or greater than 0? This is not less than 0, so that's false. On the next interval, from negative 6 to 4, I'm going to test 0. And 0 plus 6 is 6. 0 minus 6 is negative 6. 0 minus 4 is negative 4 and 0 minus 4 again is a negative 4. This time we're multiplying three negative numbers together, so it's going to be a negative. And it's negative 576. And negative 576 is less than or equal to 0, and so this one tested true. On the interval from 4 to 6, I'm going to test 5. And I'm going to move down here to do that. 5 plus 6 is um, 11. And 5 minus 6 is negative 1. And 5 minus 4 is positive 1. And 5 minus 4 again is another positive 1. And so here we get negative 11. And that is less than or equal to 0. So this interval tests to be true. And from the interval from 6 to infinity, I'm going to test positive 7. 7 plus 6 is 13. 7 minus 6 is 1. 
and 7 minus 4 is 3, and 7 minus 4 again is 3. So we have 9 times 13 is 117. And that is not less than or equal to 0, so that tested false. And so it's our inner two intervals here. And um, so we can just shade from negative 6 to 6. And in interval notation, it would be negative 6 up to 6. Um, we really just need to do this as one interval here. If this did not have the equal sign, if this was strictly less than 0, then we would have had to have listed the two intervals. Negative, whoops, we would have been using round brackets, and that's why we would have needed to have listed the individual intervals. Negative 6 to 4, union 4 to um, positive 6. And the reason that we would have needed to join, have the union of these two sets is because 4 would not be included in this. So um, so that's why we would have needed to have separated those out. Okay. And <clears throat> our last example here, um, whenever you see four terms and you need to factor um, because you're solving, you need to do factor by grouping. So we're going to group these first two terms together and the last two terms together. So 16x cubed plus 48x squared. Always make sure you put a plus sign in between your two groups, and then negative 25x minus 75. So we can factor out a 16x squared from the first group, and we'll be left with x plus 3. And then we're going to factor out a negative 25 from our second group, and we'll be left with x plus 3 again. So notice when I um, did my factoring, what was left in the parentheses after I factored out the common factor, they're both the same. And that should always happen when you do factor by grouping. And if it didn't, then um, you probably made a small mistake somewhere. So now we're going to factor out that x plus 3. And what we'll be left with is this 16x squared and then minus 25. And 16x squared is the difference of two perfect squares, so it factors as 4x plus 5 times 4x minus 5. Set each of these factors equal to 0. x plus 3 equals 0 gives you x equals negative 3. And then 4x plus 5 equals 0. Subtract 5 gives you 4x equals negative 5. And then divide by 4, we get x equals negative 5 fourths. And then set um, 4x minus 5 equal to 0. We get 4x equals 5 when we add 5 to both sides, and then divide by 4. And that gives us x equals positive 5 fourths. So again, we have three numbers to put on our number line, and it's going to give us four intervals that we need to test. And our smallest number is negative 3. And then we have negative 5 fourths and the positive 5 fourths. So my four intervals are going to be from negative infinity to negative 3. And round bracket because there's no equal sign. And then negative 3 to negative 5 fourths. And then negative 5 fourths to positive 5 fourths. And 5 fourths up to infinity. So in my first interval, I'm going to test negative 4. And we're going to plug that into our factored form. Negative 4 plus 3 is negative 1. Negative 4 times 4 is negative 16. And negative 16 plus 5 is negative 11. And then 4 times negative 4 is negative 16. And then subtract 5, we get negative 21. So um, let's multiply this out. We get 11 times 21 is 231, and it's negative. And so that is not greater than 0, so that's false. Then from negative 3 to negative 5 fourths, 5 fourths is um, 1 and a quarter, so we can test negative 2. 
So plugging negative 2 in there, negative 2 plus 3 is 1. And negative 2 times 4 is negative 8, plus 5 is negative 3. And then um, 2 times negative 4 is negative 8, minus 5 is negative 13. And so this is going to be positive 39. And this is greater than 0, so that's true. And then between negative 5 fourths and positive 5 fourths, we can test 0. And so 0 plus 3 is 3. And 4 times 0 is 0, plus 5 gives us 5. And 4 times 0 is 0 again, and then minus 5 gives us negative 5. So we get negative 75, and that is not greater than 0, so that interval tests false. And then the last one, 5 fourths up to positive infinity. So again, 5 fourths is 1 and a quarter, so I can test 2. And so when I plug 2 in there, 2 plus 3 gives me 5. And 2 times 4 is 8, plus 5 gives me 13. And 2 times 4 is 8, and 8 minus 5 is 3. So um, we have 39 times 5 gives us 195. And this is greater than 0, so that's true. So it's the two intervals that tested to be true, round brackets, because we have no equal signs. So shade the line to the right of 5 fourths and the arrow also. And then the interval from negative 3 up to negative 5 fourths. So our solution as an interval is negative 3 to negative 5 fourths union 5 fourths to infinity. And so that's it for this lecture. Let me know if you have any questions. Thanks.